let's presume that within, within Kata, we want to maintain the same height and we want to take, maintain our stage set point to a great extent of line. Now, at some point, probably with most people, those two things will be impossible together. What I'm seeing, for example, uh, this one, oh, uh, just, okay, what I'm seeing here, I'm seeing an awful lot of people break the line and maintain the same height. Because flexibility of your heel, ankle, hip, whatever it is, ankle, hip, whatever it is, is inhibiting you to, to, to keep your sense line. If you kept your sense line, you'd probably come up. So you're not coming up, you're breaking your line and then re-engaging your line at the end. Okay? I would argue that keeping your line takes precedence to keeping the same height. So, what I just want you to practice on, on these transitions is to make sure that, that above all else, you maintain your center line through that movement. Because maintaining the center line is really important. But when, whenever you, what it's trying to get you ingrained in is that whenever you move forward, you don't save that connection until the end. You have that connection right the way through, so that technique is viable right the way through. You don't want that technique to be viable only at the end, so you disconnect and then only at the end it works. You want it to be viable right the way through the transition, just in case, just in case you're hitting him there, or just in case you're hitting him here, or just in case you're hitting him here, or just in case you're hitting him here, like you're viable right the way through. But you're going, oh no, I'm gonna punch John in that perfect situation, so I can disconnect and punch him here, it's not gonna work in real life, yeah? You have to make sure that your, your technique is viable right way through by maintaining that center line. Do you understand? Well, so, the moment that you have ingrained movement that is disconnect, reconnect at the end, you're, you're kind of saving yourself for a fall. Keep the same height, yes. Keep connected, absolutely. If you have to come up, come up a little bit, you have to come up a little bit, but you're connected right way through, so be it. Yeah? Because at least it's functional. Okay, rather well, than just fall. What I don't want to do is, is, is prescribe what you should do. So, so what you should uh, prescribe what you should do in your center. So from here, you're pushing, you're rotating, you're closing your chest, closing your chest and opening. Now that will dictate your feet. If I say your feet come in and then they go out, I'd be wrong. If I say your feet go direct, I'd be absolutely wrong. If I say your feet arc through, I can probably be right. But your arc and my arc and everybody else's arc here is unique. So, so don't worry about your feet, like we were talking about yesterday. As your centre goes, your feet follow. That's as we say about today. Yeah? Um, like if you're, 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 you're like walking, centre first, feet stop you falling over. You don't think about what you're setting. Generally speaking, right? So, so this is the same. This is the same. You're going to compress, rotate, try to keep that. Absolutely keep that center line, try to keep the same height, get that compression, try and fall. Okay? This one, just as challenging, you don't want to be a little bit more challenging, you don't want to roll the 90. But push this way, don't release this way, don't release this way, only this way. Release. Yeah? Push that the flexibility of your, of your right foot, ankle, but try to kind of push squeeze and pull into that position before you open. And, and like just practicing that small nuanced movement is the key to having a complete smooth transition. But if you're thinking, okay, I'm practicing this, and then I'm gonna practice that, and you only practice the last 10% of each movement, then you're never gonna, get, never gonna get a smooth transition. And ultimately, like whatever application you wanna to give to this movement, ultimately it starts with that parry and block and strike, not just something at the end. At the end, it's, it's finished. You understand? You're, you're, you're going to block and strike within, within that, like we were talking about it yesterday, but uh, like, you know, you, you, your muscles have a bell curve of strength, and you would never punch at that end point. Whatever blocking, striking, whatever you're going to do, it's never at that end bit. It's always in that middle third. No good, no good, no good, no good. It starts to become viable. Getting stronger, 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 and about here starts to weaken as you straight. So if you're only focusing on that last bit, that last bit, then you're focusing on arguably one of the weakest parts of the technique. You want to focus on the, the middle part, that part, that part. And at that point, if you are disconnected, 
the strength that you can create with the, the optimum of optimization of your muscles is, is disconnected to your body mass. So you've got to make sure. So you've got to make sure that middle third of your technique or that transition of your technique is completely connected. This, this is where your technique is. And then you're making your fall. Not making your fall. Does that? It's just worth trying to get a smooth transition. Thank you.